Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lionberger Construction. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios, featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Morano. Today we're going in-house. My guest is William Anderson, the president and CEO of Blue Ridge PBS, the very station that produces and airs this show. We'll talk about the business of running what is a multimedia enterprise. And Will, thanks for coming on. Oh, you're so very welcome. Glad to be here. Mm -hmm. Um, first off, this is not one TV channel. Let's talk about this. This is five broadcast channels and three streaming online channels on YouTube. Uh, it's really sort of a, its own little network. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when, when PBS started, we were one channel. And as technology increased, we were able to, you know, with digital and high definition, we were able to expand to one channel. And then it, uh, two channels, and then it became more and more uh, available to us to create more and give back to the community more. So as, as segments of the community needed certain things, we added channels. And then, of course, streaming is the new thing. Mm -hmm. And, of course, with digital, you can kind of split the you can split the signal. Right, and that's the most interesting. That's, that's where we're the pioneers in doing things, at least in public media. Uh, we're not constrained by the commercial, you know, making the money the way the commercial stations do or, or locked into news. We can create that stream for specific purposes. Right, and that's one thing that you've done here is create specific channels for specific audiences. And uh, that costs money, though, obviously. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's interesting that the stream itself and the technology itself, the stream costs far less than mm -hmm. broadcast. And that's, that's good for me because one of the, the, largest, uh, the largest expenses for me is my transmitter, keeping those transmitters going. And we had to close transmitters down in far southwest. So now with the uh, availability of, of streaming, I can bring those services back to far southwest in a broadband sense. Right, I'll talk about that. I was going to talk about that later, but you talk about, like, for instance, Echo and some of the markets that you're in now, you're, but there's, where you don't have a stick anymore, but you're, you're actually in that market. So talk about that. Yeah, well, you know, broad, uh, first, first, for that southwest, that far southwest area, those, that's, that's our underserved part of southwest, that, the coal fields, the, the area uh, certainly around Marion, that's where our, our, we had a transmitter there. Uh, that was that was put up in the 70s and 80s. We had one in Norton and one in Marion. Right now, that Marion area is one of the only spaces in the country that is not serviced by a broadcast PBS station. And so uh, we were, because of economic purposes, had to remove that transmitter. Now we're going back in with Project Southwest. And that's exactly what it is. It's a streaming service called Project Southwest. It's a project for us just to see if we can actually sustain that area uh, with just the streaming service and give back to that community. Go into places like St. Paul and in the coal fields where commercial stations aren't going to go unless there's something bad happening. So we're going to tell the good things, or we are telling the good things that are out there. Streaming, it's, it's working out for us. It really is. Would you stream the whole Blue Ridge PBS channel or, or different programs or what? That's the problem. For rights issues, I can't stream PBS programming, the true PBS things, the Downton Abbey's, those, those. Ken the, Burns. It, right, right. I can't stream those. I can do that if it's geofenced. Geofenced, uh, I, can, I can send my main channel out there. And geofencing is, is, is actually tailored to uh, zip codes. And I can only hit those zip codes where your computer is, sits in that zip code. Well, so, so anyways, for rights issues, we've, we've created Project Southwest as a 24-7 stream that's just local. Now, that's hard to do mm -hmm. with one producer out there. That's, that's one of the problems because the station here is truly understaffed and has been understaffed for over 10 years if, if we're going to do what we're supposed to do. But, you know, we don't make the money that commercial stations do. We're a nonprofit. We're, we're a service organization. And so not being able to generate that type of revenue that your ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox affiliates do, we, we just have to move slowly mm -hmm. and be very judicious in, in how we, we uh, choose our projects and, and, uh, and, and who we put in place to do those projects. These, these markets that, like Marion that you want to go into with the streaming, but I guess they need to have broadband in the area or some kind of good internet service. Yeah, we hit the perfect storm because the Commonwealth is now is now focusing really heavily on getting those broadband services out to those those areas that 
it again, much like Blue Ridge PBS, those, those areas don't make economic sense for commercial entity to come in and place that. You know, it costs an awful lot of money to put fiber in mm -hmm. for the broadband services, and the terrain just won't allow for that as, as well. So, so the Commonwealth is, is uh, creating grants and um, funding to get those out there. So once, once those broadband services get out there, Gene, the, the, the selling point is that now the world has come to those areas. The world is in. All right, so what I'm saying is those areas have great things to tell to the world. So that's, that's what Blue Ridge PBS is doing. We're, we're telling the stories that are there and bringing them through the broadband back to the world. So we're, we're a promotional tool for those areas as well. well. I think the governor recently announced $2 billion to kind of complete broadband by 2024. I think 2024, making it one of the first states to have a broadband service. And it's an economic development thing too. And I'm just wondering if you see Blue Ridge PBS and some of the streaming services as, as helping to foster economic development in a way, or, or, or at least bring attraction to an area. Well, that's exactly what, it, what we're doing. I mean, that's, that's my hope is to be able to have enough producers. Number one, I'm going to hopefully have enough um, uh, funding to create an emerging journalists program for those areas because those areas need someone dedicated to those areas, right? And it could be someone from Virginia Tech, it could be someone from one of the other universities or even uh, one of the community colleges that are out there, or it could be someone who just wants to, to, to focus on rural, uh, rural stories. Um, so I'm hoping that the economic development will tell the stories of places out there. For instance, uh, spearhead trails that are out there. That's, it's, a, it's a tourist industry. We promoted that. They're able to use the videos that we created, the professional videos that we created, put it on their website, generate more uh, interest and, and uh, get those tourists out there and, and show that, you know, it's a great thing. It's a good, you know, we have to focus on outdoors. So if we can create the videos, give them back to those entities, they can grow, we can grow, everyone's together. Hmm. I know you want, one of the things you wanted to focus on, Will, is the way the new Blue Ridge PBS is doing business. Uh, and let's talk about the fundraising, contrasting it to the way that uh, PBS used to approach fundraising. Uh, and service of the community, but what's what's been this big sea change? And first of all, how long have you been in this business? Well, I, I started in South Carolina in, in public television in 1994. Okay. Uh, and I actually was a producer, producing videos to promote the schools there, and then moved up into production manager, general manager of, of a station in South Carolina, and then moved here to Blue Ridge PBS in 2008 as the executive producer, and then moving through to executive vice president, now uh, president and CEO. So, uh, so close to 30 years I've been in, in the business. Um, What's been the big changes as far as fundraising and even the way you service the community? Well, anyone who's been here remembers, and, and this was true for PBS stations across the country, the great PBS or the great public television auction, whichever entity it was. Here, the great uh, WBRA or the great uh, Blue Ridge Public Television Auction. Uh, that model went away because, be, because uh, we used to have items brought in, and that was the big fundraiser for us, by, by the way. Uh, people would bring items, and we have a full warehouse that's set up for the auction. Well, no longer do uh, companies and stores have items, they have gift certificates. Mm -hmm. Really hard to show an item uh, with gift certificates, paper or something, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's tough. And then cable came in, actually, and stole our, our idea. That's where your QVC, uh, and your, your cable auctions all came from it, it. It started there. So we weren't special anymore. And it started becoming more, uh, it cost us more to, to have the employees creating the auction and it did for what we made the auction. So the auction went away. Then we went into the pledge model, which, which we still use sparingly now today. I mean, it's, it's, it's in its, it's in its um, twilight years, I guess, because you know, you, you donate to Blue Ridge PBS, we give you a thank you gift of a DVD, a, CVD, a C, CD, or a book. Well, I don't have a DVD player anymore. I don't have a CD player anymore. Everything's online. God, I must be a dinosaur then. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's good. It still works for uh, us, but those, that model's cool. going away. And, and actually, it, it's, you know, radio's done a really nice job. And by the way, Blue Ridge PBS is different than public radio. We're a different company. Uh, a different entity. We focus on television uh, only. So radio does a really nice job of saying, help support this station, period. Help support the station, and, and, and people do. 
Blue Ridge PBS fell into the model of, if you help support this station, we'll give you a concert ticket or a DVD or a CD or a book. You, it was transactional. Mm -hmm. uh, that transactional pledge model is really going away. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't work for us anymore. So I, I hope and, 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 and see with my staff, what we're doing is giving to the community and they see the value once again for what Blue Ridge PBS does for the community and will much, uh, much like, like it was early on in the 60s and the 70s, just realize the value of what we do and say that's a worthwhile organization. Return on investment. It, it, you you want to show them return. If you, you give us $50 or whatever, $100 or $5, this is your return on investment. That's right. You're going to see us in the community versus, versus I'm going to get the CD. Uh, and you're going to see the results. Now, the pandemic actually fell right into this, this uh, great place for us. I mean, the pandemic's terrible, but it fell into a situation where uh, the Commonwealth, when students went virtual, they started scrambling. What are we going to do? How are we going to do this? We don't have the technology in the classroom. And, and I'm over in the corner saying, hey, by the way, I'm public television. We've done this before. We know how to do this. So, so we came to the aid of the Commonwealth during the pandemic and showed our worth once again. We became relevant once again in the community, at least in the education side of things, because here that's, that we were able to, on television, for those who didn't have access to the internet, mm -hmm. we had classroom instruction once again for Blue Ridge PBS TV Classroom. The interesting part is where my colleagues across the country during the pandemic created this model of education, we created things we realized with, with our staff, you know, what's missing? What can we do that's not being covered? And early on within the pandemic, our innovative team said, you know what's not being done? Uh, what's not being done is the, the, uh, the arts, the mental health portion of it, the, the, the physical education, the arts, the drama. So we created that part of Blue Ridge PBS TV Classroom to include that. And you know what? We received a Virginia Association of Broadcasters Award for sports story. Okay. I don't even have a sports team. I don't even have a sports department. What was the story? It was it was actually Coach uh, Grouse from Cave Spring teaching basketball that you can do in your driveway during the pandemic. So while you're not going to school, here's how you can actually keep active. Mm -hmm. What a great story, you know? Uh, so when we when we receive a, a, a best news story and best sports story, uh, for the VABs, and I don't have a news team and I don't have a sports team, we're doing something right. I'm just wondering when you, when, during the pandemic, were school districts locally or in the region, were they using some of the programming you were putting on as part of the curriculum or were they add-ons and they were telling kids that you should watch this or what? Well, as it, as it developed, again, they were all scrambling. They didn't know what, what were, you know, initially it was, this is gonna last a couple of weeks, right? right. I remember. Uh, and so, in place with Virginia and our, our, our sister station up in Hampton Roads, there was already a component of video teaching uh, through Virtual Virginia or otherwise through, um, through, through what we've done in the past. I mean, we've always done distance education learning. So yes, they leaned on us and they always have leaned on us for things like, you know, uh, even teaching foreign language. We're always there. But being able to expand that and show, yeah, we really need the public television education entity as we were originally chartered to do. We need that now more than ever. And we need it not only as a backup plan, but as primary education, because that's, what's, that's where the kids are going. That's what they're doing. My kids watch their phone more than they, more than they watch television, right? So we're using that here at Blue Ridge PBS. Because we're so small, uh, we could turn on a dime and make those changes quickly. And you were saying that uh, Blue Ridge PBS is one of the smallest stations in the PBS system? It is. Even though you actually reach in the four states and as many as four million it's, viewers. It's, it's small because of staffing. You know, because, because uh, approximately 10 years ago, we lost our state funding. When you, PBS was originally set up as the oasis in this new industry in the 60s, PBS was set up to be something good for the community where we, they didn't know how commercial television was going to go, but they knew they had to create this entity that was good for the community, and that's, and that's what we are. I mean, our staffing used to be at 50 plus, and it takes about 100 
staff members to run a TV station, commercial or otherwise. So us being one of the smallest stations, that's, you know, that's because of the size of, 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 of who we are, not because of the geographic area that we serve, because mm -hmm. we serve 42% of the Commonwealth. It's just because of the size. Now, we can do that, but it takes the funding. We lost our state funding in uh, about 10 years you ago. you get any state funding at this point? We just were <laughs> able to secure a little bit of state funding this past year at $350,000. I mean, that's, that's, mm. that's originally uh, 10 years ago, we were receiving a, a million four. And that's, PBS was set on a three-legged stool of support, national programming, uh, national support, uh, for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, uh, state support, and those that proverbial uh, viewers like you, right, right. right. And so I remember the we, phone banks, people on the phone. That's it. That's it. Taking and, pledges. And, and and that that state funding, l losing that state funding was devastating to both our education department and our production department. So that's created the need for us to actually grow back to where we are to be as functional as we can be mm -hmm. as the public television station in Southwest Virginia. So do you get any federal funding through this uh, Corporation of Public Broadcasting at this point? Yes, okay. every PBS station and every public radio station receives funding from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which, is, which receives their funding from Congress. So we're the only entity, this is, this is pretty neat, Gene, uh, we're the only entity in the country that receives forward funding for two years. That's, that was set up in the 60s. When they vote on the budget this year, it's for funding PBS two years out. So do you hold your breath every time they do the budget or somebody gets up in Congress and says, I don't see why we're continuing to fund public TV or, something, or public radio. It happens all the time. Well, yeah, you're right. And in the 80s, uh, it was a push by, um, I believe, Newt Gingrich. Started, right. Though. He, Newt Gingrich said, we're going to defund public television. Oh, my goodness. That was, they were sending uh, coffins with big birds up on the, <laughs> the, the you know, the, in Washington. Right. And the, the mothers and the kids came out with pitchforks and knives and said, you know, you can't, you can't cut our PBS station. I, I'm not really, I, I, don't, I don't think we're in danger of losing our federal funding because we are so important on that on that national level across the board. I mean, I have your kids until they're seven years old. You know, if I don't have them, uh, then they're watching something else. And, you know, we, we are the source of education and, and, and basic learning to that age. And we pick you up and when you're about 45, 55, and you get, you get smart and you come back to PBS. Right, right. Um, First Big Bird, then Ken Burns and Downton Abbey. And exactly. Uh, uh, but yeah, we, we receive probably about 30% of our funding comes from uh, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting funnel through Congress. I'm just wondering, uh, the, the, the approach with asking people for funding, has it worked where you're able to show them the value as, it work, as, as opposed to phone banks of people asking for, you know, taking pledges? Or, has it worked? And has it maybe made you made PBS stations work harder to, to earn that trust of people and, and to show the value. Well, the trusted, we call it the halo effect, because when, cor when, when companies actually support uh, PBS, of course, you can't do a commercial, but you can say this program is brought to you by, or we, we fully support this program or this station. When, when a, a company does that, they get the halo effect because we are truly still the trusted source. I mean, we're good. We're not going to do anything bad. And, and I, I, that's my pledge across the board. We're not going to tell any bad stories. We're going to promote the region. Mm -hmm. We're going to promote our people. We're going to promote what we do and how we do it and preserve the, the legacy of what we've done in the past. That's, that's how we do that. So have we, have we uh, had problems uh, across the board as it, as it progresses? Yes because there is so much more attractive uh, advertising opportunities for companies uh, uh, at, at the commercial side. Right. Uh, but the members themselves have to be able to see us in the community before they're going to trust us again. I think out of sight, out of mind. S uh, so now I've tasked the staff and we have a volunteer coordinator. We have a, a special events coordinator now. That's the first time we've had that in, uh, in, well, ever. We now have a marketing budget. So I believe we have to be in the public's mind before they're going to think of trusting us. We're trusted, mm -hmm. we're just not in their mind. I.e., you were at Old Salem Days, you had a booth at Old Salem Days, things like that. You Absolutely. And then, of course, our biggest promotion last year 
was Santa's Winter Wonderland, which happened between Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. And we did that again, Gene, that service, because as we reflected, most of us are parents here at Blue Ridge PBS, and we reflected and said, you know, kids aren't going to be able to see Santa this year. It's not, it's, the malls didn't even uh, open. And so what was Santa's Winter's Wonderland? It, it was a drive-through, we, oh. we, we actually spent some money um, and had some great corporate supports and, uh, and sponsors uh, and, and, and trade contributors, I right, guess, right. Uh, that it was a drive-by. You could drive through the station, see the wonderful lights display, and as you got to the end, you get to where, <coughs> where our, our garage is, our bay, our, 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 where, where the auction used to have okay. their, their, their things. Uh, you get to that bay and you see Mrs. Claus. And you turn the corner, and there's the big guy. There's the man. Yeah, and and the innovative part was that through our engineers, we were able to put a microphone on Santa, put him into your car radio, uh -huh. so you, so for social distance purposes, the windows could be rolled up, tuned to the channel, and Santa can talk to the kids. Oh wow! And it was it was fantastic. We had over two thousand, well, almost almost three thousand cars come through, uh, and we're going to do it again. And that cost that really does costs. Um, it's, it's money that I have to dip into my budget pretty deeply to do, but I'm convicted to, to make that happen once mm -hmm. again. Well, and it keeps Blue Ridge PBS imprinted in people's minds, so this is a, a benefit, something like that. that. Exactly, exactly. I wanted to talk about the Echo Station, which you launched earlier this year. Talk about exactly what Echo is and how it works. All right, so we had the opportunity to add another channel to our lineup. And again, stemming from what happened this past year and last year with the pandemic, what is the need and where did Blue Ridge PBS TV Classroom, where did that go? So we, we tossed around some ideas with my staff, my very, very creative staff, and we came up with ECHO. Number one, we're in the mountains, ECHO, right? Sure. Uh, ECHO stands for Education, Community, Health, and Opportunity. Uh, you know, education is, is absolutely a no-brainer for us, right? We, we are your education station. Uh, community, we're all about supporting the community. Health, that's the new thing. Telehealth, what is it? You know, how can we, how can we make that easier, an easy transition to what telehealth is? Uh, and of course, we're in a pandemic. Health mm -hmm. issues are huge right now for whatever age you are. But the opportunity is what I'm really excited about because that gives us a chance to profile, again, economic development within our region. What are the new opportunities there for whatever it is for education? You know, what are the opportunities for education? What do the community colleges have to offer? What does is, what is the uh, higher ed system have to offer? Mm -hmm. What about, what about the, the elementary community, elementary education community? Then. Uh, for economic development, what's there? What's what's the innovativeness? What's what technology is moving forward? So that really opens it up for everything. And again, that's a that's a channel that's very very innovative. No one else in the country came up with this idea, including the delivery system. It's a it's a YouTube channel, Gene. Okay. It's it's how my kids and college kids see television or media now right it's it's on your phone or on your computer or on your uh, you know on your desktop but yeah you can't get it you can get it on right so the, what we did we, we created a a streaming service that is broadcast so you all get a taste of what it is whereas my my friends in commercial television are trying to figure out how to take their broadcast and stream it you just fl you flip the we model flip the model and it's not it sounds easy but it's it's not easy here's here's the best part about it where a tv station takes you know approximately to to just move the channel forward just the the operations of the channel takes 10 or 12 people uh <clears throat> this is done with two i can do it with two people mm. uh and one of them is actually remote in uh in silver springs maryland Okay, so, so basically you come up with programs and you, you got a package, you just plug them in. I, I can't, and I can have trusted partners that can actually drop things in too, Gene. If you, if you had a show like this one mm -hmm. and you wanted to drop it in and you did it on your own, I could give you a, a folder, you drop it in, it automatically plays from your, your Google Drive, I guess, it plays over the air on Echo. It's, it's incredible. Uh, tech, technologically, it's an, it's an incredible model. Our are there many other public TV systems that are doing something like Echo, going YouTube none, first? None, none. Really? None. Nor is there a commercial station that I can find. 
So uh, we have had a lot of inquiry on how we're doing it, what we're doing, and a lot of support legislatively to, to make ECHO continue to work. And I guess the genesis of this was what? Getting into areas, Will, where they did not have access to over the air? Yeah, absolutely, because that's, again, from losing that Marion transmitter and creating that broadband-only service, that's where we figured, okay, this, this is going to work uh, overall. This is how television should progress. It makes, it, it makes sense because that's the way people are watching now. So we started with the beta test of Blue Ridge Streaming, then moved to Project Southwest. Echo was the next logical move as, as a hybrid between streaming and broadcast. Got about a minute or so left. Uh, make your pitch. With all the specialty cable channels, Will, and streaming channels now, why is public television still vital in your opinion? And, and why is it worth supporting? The, what makes us vital is because we're here, Gene. It's the local part of it. I mean, PBS is great. Everybody loves PBS. Everybody, again, Downton Abbey, The News Hour, Nova, Nature, all of that stuff is fantastic. But what makes us special is what we do for the community right here. And that's what we hope to do is to make the community understand that we are absolutely here for them. Anyone who calls here, I end the phone call by saying, come visit us here at the station. I want to show you what we're doing and how we can make a difference in your life and, and your children's lives. This is, this is the place where we're chartered to be here for you. We are here for you. We'll continue to be here for you. And uh, we're going to continue to ask for your support as well. <laughs> All right. William Anderson is the president and CEO of Blue Ridge PBS. Will, thanks for, thanks for joining us today. This is Business Matters. I'm Gene Morano. Have a good day. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org.